In this video, I am going to be showing you how to solder each one of these connectors so that you can change these connectors on your RC car and on your batteries. Welcome to the channel. My name is Troy. This is Roadside RC. What you tend to find me doing on the channel is everything from racing and bashing and crawling to drifting, plus product review videos and how to's. And one of the biggest things that I see as a gap in a lot of RC enthusiasts who enjoy the RC hobby is ability to solder different connectors on, whether it's they're changing off the connectors on a battery or they got a vehicle in and they want to change the connectors that's on the ESC. So many times people are buying adapters or other things or maybe some shoddy like butt splicing and things along those lines in order to try to get these different connectors on their vehicles. So I'm going to try to help by today going through and showing this is IC5 and IC3, XT90 and XT60, the banana plug that tends to come on a lot of red cats. Traxxas plugs, Dean's plugs, a very popular one, plus EC5 and EC3. So I'm going to show you how to do uh, solder, how to solder these plugs onto wires, um, each one of them. And then at the very end of the video, I'm going to give you a list of what are the tools that I'm using in order to do all this for you today. So that way, even if you don't have any soldering equipment or anything like that, you can go out and pick it up easily and then be doing this on all your vehicles it really, really is very helpful. So let's get started. A very important thing as we go through all of these steps is that I'm gonna tell you that the wires are already pre-tinned. Now, what does that mean? So if I have a bare wire here, I just cut the tip off of this. It has not been soldered previously, so that is bare wire. I am going to put it in some flux like I have here. And you see, it just kind of gooed that on there. Now, as I set this down, I have my tip here. I put a little bit of solder on the tip of my soldering iron. I get a little bit extra ready. And as I come down here, let's make sure you can see it. As I come down here, that flux is gonna just suck that solder all in and around that wire. Bigger wire like this, I'm gonna hit it on both sides just to make sure. And what you see here is one beautiful, shiny, full of solder wire. That wire is now ready to be put into a plug. The first plug style that we're gonna look at is actually my favorite. This is the one that I use on almost all my vehicles, which is the XT90 and the XT60. So what you'll find is all of these are gonna solder exactly the same. The design is the same. It is just two bulleted ends sticking out from both sides. Now, a couple tips here. Make sure you get the ones with the wire covers. That keeps you from having to worry about heat shrink, although heat shrink's not that big of a deal. You see the same thing here on the XT60. As I solder wires together, I will typically find that wire, that connector's mate. That helps to make sure that as I heat this up, if the plastic gets soft around that plug, it doesn't allow the orientation of that bullet in there to move at all. And so that's why I keep these plugged together. And then we're gonna solder these wires on either side. The first step with the XT90 is to heat up the end inside here. And you're gonna pre-tin inside here. So as you heat it up, you want a little puddle just like that. You want a little puddle of solder in there. Now you're gonna have already pre-tinned your wire end. So the end of the wire that you're gonna be soldering in there already has some solder on it. And you're simply gonna be bringing the two of them together. You wait until they get hot. That wire sinks in. That wire I'm using is actually slightly dirty, so you can see it doesn't want to take the solder as well. You want to make sure that you're using a clean wire. That's the issue that I'm seeing here. But just that simple. So that's why I love these XT90s is, man, they just solder so easily, so nicely. Of course, before you ever get started, you're going to have had your wire cover on. Once you get both sides in, 
you just simply slide it over, clip it in, and you are in good shape. As we show you, the XT60 plug is exactly the same way. It's just smaller. So you can see, obviously, it's going to take some smaller gauge wire. But otherwise, the process is exactly the same for the XT60 as it is for the XT90. Both very, very simple, easy plugs to work with. That's why, honestly, they're my favorite. The next connector we're going to work with is actually a very popular course, which is the TRX4 connector. Now the difference with this one is we actually have to get this end out and then solder it independently and then put it back into this plug. So for demonstration purposes here, what you need to do is have some way to hold that plug and either with a small punch, or sometimes you can just push them they come right out the back side. The wire side of the plug is where they come out. The TRX plugs are also very easy to use. You will see um, it's just this one simple piece of metal. It has two tabs that stick out of the side. So what you're going to first do is pre-tin that little tab right here at the very end. And it does not need a lot. You can put just a little bit of solder on there. You're going to make just a little pool. You see just like that again your wires coming in you're going to have just like with the other wires you're going to have already pre tinned your wire you see this water wire already has solder on it and then all you have to do is simply lay those two together wait until both of those puddles melt You can kind of push the solder around sometimes to make sure you're comfortable that it's done. Then you recommend you hold it together until you see that it cools off a little bit. You'll see the color change from shiny to slightly dull. Then at that point, you have that tab hooked on appropriately. Both sides of this plug work exactly the same. With this end now soldered on, you have to come into the back side of the plug. You're going to see that it's offset. So the wire is offset to one side. You want that to go to the top. This slides in, but then you'll notice on this side that it's not all the way out yet. So you need to take a flat blade screwdriver, some other tool that you have, and you're going to push in until you hear it pop. And now it's flush with the end of the plug. And you have one TRX plug soldered up just beautifully next on our list is the pretty famous dean's plug very very many people lots of folks use this dean's plug again this is one where i suggest you find its mate as you get ready to solder that wire on because these the plastic that's typically used in these is not super high heat resistance i have melted a bunch of these plugs if i have not had them connected in together so i highly recommend that you do that Similar again to the wires that we've already done, the plugs that we've already done, you're going to come in on this side and you are going to pre-tin that one edge. Now this one's already had, obviously, a connector on it so you can see it already has solder there. You're going to want to put your heat shrink over this wire first because since it does not have any kind of cover on the back side here, you can see that all sides need some level of heat shrink. You're going to then come in and simply, of course, again, with your pre-tinned wire, you're going to have already had solder on your wire. You're going to melt the wire. And as it gets hot, it's going to melt down with that wire on the plug there, too. Again, hold it in place until it cools off a little bit. And now you are ready to slide your heat shrink over and, and shrink that joint and you are in good shape. Up next is these IC3 and IC5 connectors. They solder up just like those XT90s that we soldered and XT60s that we soldered earlier. They have that half moon cup that you're going to fill with some solder. You're going to lay the wire down in. The only difference with them is that they do have that sensor wire in the middle for battery voltage for telemetry. So you will want to solder that one 
first. So if you're gonna put that small little wire on, you wanna do that one in there first, just based on how close it is. And you don't want, and if you, especially if you're doing the battery side, you don't want any voltage coming in here that you could accidentally arc across. And so that means you're gonna solder this small one first, then solder your two battery wires on. Again, these tend to come with the caps, so you do not have to worry about the shrink wrap. So I'm going to skip showing you how to actually do this since it is exactly the same as the XT90. These next two plugs are a little bit different. They're kind of a mix of everything that we've done so far. This is the EC3 and the EC5. They come with a plastic housing and separate bullets. All right, so what we have here is an individual bullet that looks kind of like the end of those XT90s that we were working with and those IC5s that we we're working with earlier. However, it's also a bullet style, kind of like the TRX4, where after you solder it, you then have to assemble it into the plug. Now this style bullet, especially when using a handy dandy little stand like I have here, is actually rather simple. You get your soldering iron in there, start to get it hot, and then very similar to some of the tools that we've already seen, you're going to put some of that solder directly in there. Okay, filling up that cup with some solder. You then come in with your wire. And you're gonna melt that wire and that solder together. Okay, you're gonna feel it when it gets soft in there. Everything comes together. And you have a nice joint. You can also do the same kind of thing if you want to. You can do it sideways, kind of like we did with the XT90s. Um, if you needed to, like with this tool, you could lay wire and pin in there sideways like that. Fill all that in. The final assembly of, the, of these is much similar to that of, that X, of the TRX plug, which is you get it in there, and then you push until you hear the pop. And then that is in there. Again, no need for heat shrink or anything like that because your joint is completely encased in the plastic housing. Really quite easy, quite nice to use. Only thing you gotta be pay attention to compared to the TRX plugs is you'll see that this male side has the open female side and the men's side. And the, the female side of the plug is opposite. Now obviously this is EC3, you can't do that, but you gotta just make sure your male versus female on the inside of the plug is set appropriately. Soldering an EC3 is exactly the same process as the EC5, both very simple. Again, if you need to get one out, you end up using a screwdriver or something and pushing it out the backside, just like we did with the TRX earlier. The last plug style we're dealing with here today is honestly my least favorite of all of them. It is the dual bullets that you tend to see frequently on some ready to run red cat vehicles. What I don't like about them is that each plug has a small and a big side. Um, one, is, one is a male, one is a female inside of there. On each side of the connection, it is very easy to get these backwards. It is easy to get them in the wrong order. Um, any mistakes like that can end up leading to you frying some of your electronics. Plus these ends are not as easy to solder in as some of the other ones that we've already dealt with. But let's get into it just so you see what's there. So here you can see, just wanted to show you clearly the more bullet style, open-ended style for the positive side of this and then the, the smaller bullet closed male side for the negative wire on this side. Again, the smaller one goes into the smaller hole, bigger one goes into the bigger hole. Again, using the little holder here, put that soldering iron in there, melt a little bit of solder down into that bullet. And then with all this together, and stick your wire in there. This is where it gets a little tricky. So you're gonna stick your wire in there, you're gonna get everything hot. You see it got hot right there, started to melt. I'm gonna put a little bit more solder in there to make sure it has something to sit to. And when I pull off, there may be a little gap in there because you're not necessarily meant to fill this solid. So there may be a little gap in there, but again, your wire should be adhered. What's important here for assembly is that when you solder them on, you want to solder it in this way with the wires already through the plug. Then you can pull these in 
And with your tool, again, similar to the ones we've done before, you're going to push until you hear the click. And then at that point, those are soldered in solid. Until you hear that click, and then that is back in there solid. If you need to get them out, you simply take a screwdriver or a punch like this, and you can punch on the back side and push them out the front. As promised then here at the end of the video, here are the tools of the trade that I was using. First up, the solder itself, high rosin core. This is gonna be a leaded solder. You can get it in different diameters. This is actually 0.03 inch. Uh, diameter it's actually pretty small you know you use what you can get a hold of uh, but a lot of times for general RC use I can get away with something thicker than this this is just what I have on hand at the moment I use the leaded instead of the unleaded because it has a lower melting point and makes life so much easier the unleaded has a much higher melting point and makes and it's just a whole lot harder I have a sponge, just typical generic super cheap kitchen sponge that I use for helping to keep and make sure that my tip is nice and clean. A clean tip is very, very important here. It needs to be shiny. It needs to be super clean. Otherwise, it does not transfer the heat appropriately. So that's what the sponge is for. I have this uh, copper brass, I don't know what it is. It's a little tub full of this stuff. It comes in a lot of the soldering kits. I put tape on it because the lid kept wanting to come off. Again, it's something that you can use to easily help clean the tip and it's super cheap. I earlier mentioned this flux. This is just regular soldering flux paste. Um, helps for retinning the tips. This is a little grabber that I've picked up rather recently and has been super duper helpful. Um, it can clip wires in, it can clip connectors in, it, you saw me put bullets in up here at the top. It'll even accept square connectors down there if you're soldering them and it's all spring loaded. A couple pieces of carbon fiber with some spring loading. It was great. Uh, heat shrink tubing, which you didn't actually ever see me use today, but heat shrink tubing is uh, very commonly used to help insulate those wires. You can get a bundle package of it. This is just a couple pieces that came with a Hobbywing ESC. Knife for cutting things. The um, This is a part of a soldering kit. It's basically what ends up being is just an, an insulated screwdriver so that you can help hold wires down as you go. Of course, you need a good set of wire cutters for cutting the wires in the first place. And then you need a good soldering iron. So this is the one that I use from Weller. It's actually a mismatch. So I will provide you the link to this actual soldering iron itself. You see what it does is it just plugs into this base. You don't have to have the base. You can also just plug this directly into the wall and it will work like that just at full power. However, it is nice in the base with the little holder. You can actually regulate the voltage to it here on off and then it does come with its own sponge also. So all of this is what you need. You can start with a couple pieces of it. You know, there's a couple things here that I would say you might have one of these laying around. You probably already have a pair of wire cutters and a knife. You already have a flat blade screwdriver. So really what you can get away with at the very, very beginning is the soldering iron itself, solder, flux, and the heat shrink tubing. That's all you really, really need. These other tools are just kind of nice to have items and things that help it make it easier for you. All right, and just like that, that is my guide for how to solder the most common RC connectors. I really hope this was useful for you. If it was, please provide me some comments down below as to how this was, which of the connectors that you use mostly, was this helpful at all? Do you have any tips and tricks if you're already out there soldering? Do you have any tips and tricks for anyone else that you can put down there so other people can come here and see that and benefit from it? So I'm going to get to working on some other videos. Please come over here, watch some of the things that we've already made, and we will see you in the next video. So thank you and goodbye.